Hi, and welcome to another episode of Live Photography with Mr. John. Today, we're going to be talking about what makes a good photo. Now, all the information that I'm doing for this video comes from photographylife.com from an article by Spencer Cox that was published February 10th of 2019. So let's get started. So what do we consider a good photo? Is it subject matter? Is it lighting? Is it composition? Is it any of those factors? And the truth is that no matter what the photo is, whether it's a good or a bad one, um, the main purpose of it, the main reason it is to exist is that it has some kind of a purpose. Um, and that purpose can vary depending on the photographer. The main point of photography is to not only have a goal, but kind of have uh, the vision to recreate that goal and to do it the most effective way that you can. So the first thing we need to talk about is having a vision. So as I said before, um, even in good photography like this, um, there's a reason for it. There's a purpose for its existence. The same can also be said for a photo like this, which is not great quality, but there is a clear reason why the photo was taken to begin with. So whether the photo is good or bad, there is always a reason for its existence. When we're looking at a subject matter, instead of asking ourselves or telling ourselves, wow, that looks cool, I'm gonna take a picture of it, we need to kind of consider, well, how can I make it look better? Um, I have this scene in front of me, what can I show, how can I show that in a way that it is better? Um, is it different lighting? Is it a different mood that I wanna set? Is it different things that maybe I envision doing in editing? Um, all these things should be contributing factors, but the, the main point is to have some clear thoughts as to taking the subject matter in front of you and then displaying it in a way that it is the most effective. Now, clearly the challenge in this is actually achieving what you envision. So the second part of this is putting your vision into practice. Now, sometimes depending on your vision, it's not achievable with all subject matter. So in this case, we have a, a bright sunny day. We have this beautiful waterfall. Now, let's say your vision was to make this look dreary and moody and give you a sense of terror. Um, it might not be achievable. Now, the same could be said about this photo. So we have uh, lightning and we have this volcano explosion. And suppose your vision was to try to make this a lighthearted and fun, happy scene. Uh, again, because of the subject matter, that vision might not be possible. And you need to consider that, that your vision and the actual subject matter kind of line up the way you want them to. So one of the biggest things you can do is just choose your subject matter carefully. You have to be deliberate and purposeful when you pick your subject matter. With that being said, when you take a photo, every part of the photo should exist in that photo for a reason. Uh, one of the biggest ways you can do this and to achieve it is by kind of reducing and minimizing any elements in the photo that would kind of harm the intent or harm the message that you're trying to convey. Uh, the three main excuses that we use when we don't achieve that vision um, are that, well, that's how it looked. Um, another one is there was no better vantage point. Or the worst of all is simply, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't notice all that stuff in the background when I first took the photo. So these are things that we can easily avoid and these are excuses that we can easily avoid just by taking more careful consideration when we're taking a photo. Another thing we should also focus on is to shoot for edit. Um, we've covered this in a couple of the other lessons that I've recorded. Um, and what that means is not necessarily shooting the perfect photo, but shooting as close to perfection as possible. And this is important because when we get to the editing portion of making our photography, we don't want to over edit. We don't wanna to spend too much time here. We want to just make some subtle changes, bring out maybe some color, bring out some lighting, bring out some shadows, um, but in the most effective way, again, to convey that message that we're trying to show. So we don't wanna spend a lot of time and we don't wanna overdo it so that it looks over edited and it just looks junky. Another helpful tip is to actually learn more about lighting and to learn more about composition. Um, there's a lot of resources out there on the internet 
uh, about different lighting sources and how they can affect your photos. Similarly, um, you can do the same thing with composition. Um, and some of the key things that we've covered already would be like the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or anything like that. Um, they will instantly help you make better compositions and make better decisions when you're taking a photo. Finally, um, the last thing we need to consider when we're taking a good photo is, is it appropriate for the audience that we're showing it to? So in this example, we have this cute little picture of a cat kind of peeking maybe underneath a, a shelving or under some kind of a piece of furniture in a household. And for a lot of people that love cats, this is a great photo. For people that hate cats, this is a terrible photo because they already have that bias in their head that cats are terrible, this photo is terrible. So we need to be very careful about the audiences that we choose. Um, and when I say the audiences that we choose is if you're going to a cat convention or an, a cat art convention and want to show up this photo, it's probably going to go over really well. If you're going to a dog art convention and you show this photo, not so much. So in some ways we can choose our audience. And if we can't choose the full audience, then sometimes we can just choose the majority of the audience. Because one important thing to remember in any art form is that we can't please everyone. So according to this article, the main three things are forming a vision, um, putting that vision into practice, and then choosing the right audience. And that in turn is what makes a good photo. Um, the rest of it, the lighting, editing, all that can be important too. But as far as a good photo, it all depends on the idea you have in your head and how well you're able to execute it and who you're showing it to that decides whether or not it's a good photo. So going forward, I hope you take more consideration uh, when you're taking photos, take that extra time, look at it from different angles, um, go close up or go far away, try different lightings, try different times of day. Um, when you first see something, don't immediately just take the photo and be like, okay, done. Actually take that time to think about how can I show this scene that I see in the most extravagant way, in the most beautiful way that I can possibly imagine. And how can I use all the knowledge that I have to make that come to life? So I hope this was useful to you. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I hope you take more consideration the next time you take photos. And until next time, take care.